Welcome Wargamers, join your hosts, Falco and Monty, two Canadian wargaming enthusiasts, as we explore all aspects of tabletop wargaming. We roll dice, talk tactics, share hobby hacks, and explore new tabletop systems, all on the Trident Wargaming Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back, Trident Wargaming, another bolt action episode. Uh, I'm here again, your host Andy, and with me again is Mr. Jason. How's it going? Oh, how did he? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Been uh, been a yeah. busy summer already, eh? The uh, the hot hot summer heat has uh, taken me out of action for a while. <laughs> yeah, no, a lot of uh, hot trips probably, and out to the lakes and stuff like that. You know, with the doing the fam jam kind exactly. of thing. Yeah, yeah, no. exactly. I I try to stay cool myself, but you know. <laughs> just go to the basement and hobby, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, today's episode is pretty much, we're going to be talking about, um, having a balanced army, um, you know, having the right tool for the right job. Um, I hear that way too much at work, but, um, <laughs> it applies. So, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a thing we're talking about. Uh, there's been some chatter just with a couple guys I know about, um, tournament lists and, uh, just events and just regular gaming, you know, um, about having a balanced army compared to specific armies like veteran armies and stuff like that. Um, we had an episode previously about veteran armies, so. Um, so that's kind of going to be the takeaway with this episode. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we're going to go to the hobby front, see what's going on, what's happening, what you're working on, Jason. Uh, it's, it's bleak on the hobby front here because of the summer front. Yes. I am a, I am a, quite a, uh, a thoroughly cold weather you know, uh, enthusiast, mm -hmm. I, I get much more done in the, in the winter. So I've, I've got not, not too much done a little bit on, uh, on, uh, civil war epic models. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't touched, about... I haven't touched any of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, as you can see my stockpile, <laughs> the um, stockpot. yeah. Uh, myself, I've kind of been all over the place. Um, uh, heresy front, been doing a lot of that because it's hot and new and super excited with that. Uh, kind of went through some of my bolt action, kind of looking at, you know, the little projects that I have had going. Um, I had like three armies kind of on the go just in different yeah. states and it was like, okay, well these guys I'm going to put away for the time being because, you know, I'm not actually using them at the moment. I'm not working on them because I want to finish something else. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, again, the, the winter Germans are so close to, to being done. It's just, I gotta just take one day and just, that's what I'm working on. Um, and then of course I had to go through my, uh, my Soviets, uh, army cause I've been using them lately. And, uh, they need a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, fixing up, you know, um, getting more infantry built and, and used for what I need them for and filling in the ranks. And, um, because they are an older set, uh, they're a little bit more, the weapons and stuff are a little bit more fragile. Yeah. They're thinner. I, yeah. I do, I do appreciate very much the stockier weapons on the newer uh sculpts i know they're a little bit out of scale the the weapons but i'll take that i don't care they don't break every yeah you know every time you put them in your case yeah no so, it's yeah. it's a good it's a good change and we've seen in multiple sets now that that's what they're going with 
Yeah. So I'm expecting at some point in the future that they'll replace the Soviet set. They'll probably replace the Japanese set because um, they repla- they replaced the Americans. They replaced the mm-hmm. British. Um, and then any other new set that came out, like the Italians, which I still have to do a, a bit of an unboxing for, get back on that. Um, that new set has been built with that idea in mind right so but yeah totally agree with you on that um yeah so that's kind of where i've been i've been painting up um another system a little bit right uh we have like a a slow grow happening so working on that uh sunday nights i have like a hobby night for that community um the 30k community warriors lodge kind of our homebrew um community that we've i help run and whatnot too um and then yeah just uh with the stalingrad stuff coming coming to an end here um i got (laughs) i got some um i got some uh kind of media kind of video things to kind of work work up for the finale you know um like i talked to you about uh off air here but uh that kind of stuff and then some 3d printing um i've been trying to get stuff printed for my um normandy journey kind of thing there so i got a whole bunch of uh bunkers done now um i got a whole bunch of hedgehogs and dragon teeth tank traps and stuff uh got those all printed and still printing like i'm amassing a pile of them excellent um and then um i ended up uh printing out the first floor of a house normandy kind of style house um there was a whole bunch of files i think it was patrick miniatures uh was was the name of the company that i got the stl files from so um yeah just doing that and then finding some craters like making massive craters for the board so once i get that stuff all printed and in the works uh hopefully soon enough um i got like a week in the end of august that i'm I'm off i'm probably gonna pull out the uh the uh, foam cutter and start shaping the actual landscape for for that so excellent yeah gonna be um probably film kind of my progress and stuff kind of what I've got done, where, you know, where I'm going with it kind of thing. And then, uh, hopefully post that and maybe write up some stuff about it. So yeah, little projects, Sweet. people love that stuff. So be good. But yeah, other than that, that's, that's about it on the hobby front. Um, so yeah, meat and potatoes, I guess the balanced army, what do you, what do you need? What do you want in your army? Are you a you know an all comer list that's going to be able to take on whatever's thrown at you? And keep in mind, this is with a reinforced platoon, not so much uh, you know theater selectors from any campaign books and stuff like that. So um, twelve fifty, you know, maybe you're doing double reinforced platoons, but keep it in mind, you know, objective games, keep it in mind, tanks, uh, artillery, snipers, anti-tank guns, veteran units, any other units for that matter, flamethrowers, stuff like that. Right. So like in your mind, Jason, you know, when you, when you're building a list and you're looking at those kind of things, what, what do you usually take in your, your army? If you're trying to do like a, a balance list like that or, or something that you're throwing together that you want to have enough punch to take things on. You want to have enough gear to be able to, you know, work with, um, against, let's say you got a tiger coming at you, you know, um, maybe the army has a whole bunch of small teams, you know? So, you know, what, in your mind, what do you, what do you kind of, think about that like what do you have what what would you take well, well i think uh obviously i guess for a balance list 
really, you got to, I mean, it, it sounds obvious, but uh, you just need to make sure that you can take care of all of those elements. You need something to take care of tanks. The mm-hmm. obvious answer for that is to have a tank yourself. It's a mobile anti-tank gun, generally, is what most tanks are, they, they, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, anti-tank artillery pieces are... I'm not sold on them. Dare I say it? In, in this, they're, they're tough to use. Are they a hit or miss? Oh, they are definitely hit or miss. <laughs> and and the thing is, is that you lose that game at deployment. Yes, with the uh, artil- with the uh, the anti tank gun, because they're they're not static, but they're I mean they really kind of are. You're you're not going to be hunking them across the battlefield. You know, at six yeah. inches pop, unless you got a a transport or a tow. But even then. You're, you're you're probably not moving it that far, and if you do, you're reducing the amount of times it it shoots. Mm-hmm. You know, so I I I'm not sold on them. I sometimes bring them because they're cheap, especially uh, in the armies where it allows you to do an either uh, AP or AT round. Okay. Or uh, HE shell uh, kind of thing. HE, HE shell, yeah. HE or AP, I meant to say. Yeah. Uh, those are a good option because you can kind of do both. But yeah, I'm not. So I'm not sold on on those. So I'll, a tank is my anti tank. Plus, I, if I'm playing, and I, a lot of times I play themed lists, so I'm mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily the most balanced guy but i'll so uh with my airborne all those suckers have uh anti-tank grenades yeah that's true that's true uh just to give that tank something to be a little bit afraid of and i've had it work so many times actually you know it doesn't sound plausible but it really is especially when you catch that tank staying still yep or you're able to move before that tank you know, that tank gets greedy and stays still to take a shot, you know, without the minus one to move, you know, for moving. And then you can run in and you're hitting on four or well, you're not hitting on fours, but uh, on a four plus that counts as a, as a hit essentially for your, uh, to figure out your armor penetration when you're doing the assault on a tank. Yeah. No, uh, sure. So, uh, so much easier than a six. Uh, if it if it moves at all, right? So, it, but it it happens. I probably killed more tanks with anti tank grenades than I have with anti tank guns. Well, I remember one match you caught me off guard uh, with. It was my Stug. And I think I used the pintle mounted MMG. Um, mm-hmm. I had moved, and I shot my weapons even with the MMG and you actually assaulted me with a unit that had the grenades mm-hmm. and because I was open top now, yeah, you did damage and it was just, I was destroyed. That was it. Yeah. Right. So, you know, that there's one, there's right there. There's one thing, even though when you're building a list and you're looking at like your anti-tank grenades, they're what, I think they're like two points a dude, two yeah, points three- a soldier. Or something like that. Um, if you got 10 guys, you know, what, 20 points? If you can afford it. Yeah, why? Uh, I would definitely take it. You why know. not, man? Take it because you, you know. never know when you're in that situation. You're like, damn it. I like wish that, I had him you, now. You know, like, if you look at it, it's th- having that ability on all of your troops is better than having an extra squad and having none of your squads have that ability. True. Right. Especially if your squad's very mobile, right? Your army's mobile. Yeah. Right. It makes a big difference. Then you can deal with that. Now you're, now you're, uh, you know, now you're a threat. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, 
And, you know, and even like uh, uh, Soviets inexperienced with the Molotov cocktails, which count as anti-tank grenades. Yep. If your tank didn't move, they still only need a four to count as a hit to add to the the armor pen uh, on the tank assault. So even poor quality troops with anti-tank grenades can do it. I mean, and, and probably it's more likely with the crappy troops because you have more of them. I mean, I, I pull it off with my airborne. Yeah. That... And I, I, I have more, you know, uh, uh, troops in the, in the uh, Soviet squad. No, definitely. You know, so 12 yep. dice needing fours. It, you know, it's a lot uh, lot more viable. And each, of course, each hit is plus one on the uh, pen value. So a D6 plus whatever amount of hits you got, essentially, is what it counts to, to beat the pen value. Yeah, as long as you hit, you know, you, you roll good, right? It's, uh, it's definitely a viable thing. Yeah, it's you a know. viable thing, and and better than those anti tank guns, mm -hmm. for yeah, sure. Yeah, and I mean even, I mean sometimes better than a tank. <laughs> I mean I I won't say uh, I don't like the security of a tank, and honestly I won't say that I I love the coolness of a tank anyway. Yeah, having but, that uh, armor in the army and on the board is is always epic. Um, you know, and there's the thing too is there's different options with those tanks too right like sure they got the at shell but a lot of times they have multiple machine guns or exactly, yeah maybe they have the hull mounted flamethrower right on yeah. retrospect on that too um that's another option for anti-tank is the flamethrower flamethrower for sure that right? forced morale check mm -hmm. is what's going to get a guy he's not going to really blow up that tank you know, most and maybe maybe a very light vehicle, yeah. But he's going to make them get out of that vehicle and hoof it. Is what he's going to do with the uh, the pins, and then having to take that instant morale check. Exactly. So yeah, flamethrowers are a big time option. The only thing is you got to get close. And again, that's I guess the same thing is with the anti tank grenades. You gotta, you know, yeah. risk it. You know, but if you play it right, risk the biscuit. if you play it right, yeah. you can you can do it. You know, and the, depending on the mission too, because there's some wonky missions where it's like, oh, you come off of this edge, or you could come off of any other edge, and oh yeah, this and that, right? But there's that. You know, for a, a tanks, obviously, um, you have your bazooka teams, Piet teams, Panzer Shrek, Panzer Faust. Um, that kind of stuff. You also have the Japanese, um, pretty much, uh, anti-tank bombers yeah. that dicks. <laughs> yeah. But they're, they're, they have the biggest bonus, right? Haven't seen them in a long time, but they have the biggest bonus. Um, so, you know, running around stuff like that to deal with tanks, which is, uh, not always like the number one thing, but it's obviously a, a threat on the board. That's it's something, a thing. something to consider. Um, and then, mm -hmm. dealing with teams. Yes. I mean, you got your obvious sniper. Yes. Which on paper mulches teams left, right, and center. Every team on the board is going to die because of that sniper mm -hmm. until you roll the dice and you get a two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that that's, that's the thing with snipers. I mean, I've had good games where every shot's a hit. And not every roll is a wound, right? Yeah. So um, I've had other games where they're doing great and they've taken out three targets. Perfect, right? And then there's yeah. other games where they just flopped all game and it's like, oh, why do I take them? But and you know what I, what I find with the snipers is that uh, even if they don't kill the enemy teams they quite often can be used to deter the placement of enemy teams. So uh, if you have an area where you don't want them to have a machine gun or uh, don't want them to have a really uh, good line of sight with the uh, artillery observer 
or something like that. I mean, you put that sniper there. Yep. And they they'll avoid that area like the plague sometimes. And of course, the other thing snipers are great at is uh, they're magnets for f- shooting. People don't. People are psychologically damaged by the concept of snipers <laughs> that you just want to get them off the board, despite them being average at best in the reality of the game. Uh, they're they're terrifying. Yeah, they uh, small team. Um, usually you're putting them in some kind of hard cover. Yeah. Um, so they're hard to take out. Usually, I mean, myself, it's either a regular or a veteran. Yeah. If I can take a veteran, I will. If not, I'll go to regular. Um, you just got, you got to watch your placement with them because you don't want to get sniped by the sniper. Right. And I mean, that's what happened. A lot of times it's. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so there's, you know, there's that aspect of it, but like the sniper is a counter to small teams, right? Or not small teams, but, um, weapon teams, right? Um, of course there's also, you know, taking out NCOs. There's also taking out, um, machine guns and all these other teams and stuff like that in, in units, right? Like engineer squads or pioneer squads, they tend to have a flamethrower in it. Well, if I'm shooting with a sniper and I'm targeting that unit, that's probably what I'm taking out first. Yeah, yeah big time. Right? Like, it's a, such a threat. And now it's a threat that has protection. Um, you know, stuff like that, right? But then you also have the opposite thing. The counter to a sniper could be a mortar. Could be a yeah. howitzer, right? Because... Mortars are great. I think they're underrated. Well, I don't know if they're underrated. I feel that everybody pretty much takes them, so I... I'll retract Always. that statement. But people, people, God, they are. Yeah. They can be fabulous. Yeah, and they seem like they kind of. Oh, I don't know. I know it's perception. It's anecdotal evidence, but it's it. It feels to me that they are are they're clutch. Like any game mm-hmm. that I've really like. Oh yeah, I I killed on that game. You know, that's the guy. Or or like, oh man, I would have lost. But then this hit wiped out that squad and I was able to catch the objective or whatever. Or didn't wipe out the squad, but hurt them enough that they were pinned down. Or or right. uh, some people get them into the open hatch of a tiger tank. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, yeah. The, the lucky I know shot. I, I, with just a knee mortar, was able to... Uh, 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 stop a Hanomag or a Stumel. Oh hit yeah, it twice. I didn't kill it, but it was stuck the whole game with just two rando shots at that Stumel. It didn't do anything. But so, and see, it, sometimes that's that's just it. Like you fire off that round, it hits, and maybe you don't do damage, but you're doing pins. And, yeah, and and again, like. Now they're stuck, right? Like any kind of, any kind of barrage weapon like that is, uh, is best for taking out units that literally are, are parked, right? So mortar visits mortar, more visits sniper, more visits MMG team. Um, myself, if there's an artillery piece on the board, that's what my mortar is going to try to go for. Yeah, because they're probably not moving it. Exactly. If they're not you moving know, or it. Or if they do, it's not shooting. And you really, I mean, your objective is for that mortar is to stop the enemy from shooting. Yeah. If you're targeting a artillery, then you've succeeded either way. Yeah, yeah so. I'm 100% on board with you on that. Uh, counter battery fire is the the primary and objective. And, it, and it's a cheap option. Honestly, like it's a cheap option. Like even like you don't see too many people actually have heavy mortars out there. I take it with my Soviets because it's there. And yeah. if it hits, it's doing damage, right? Yeah. Um, but even just a medium mortar, like you end up taking two guys out on an artillery crew. Well, they're already making a check yeah. with, with pins already. And then depending on the circumstance, um, 
you know, you, maybe there's already pins on them or not, right? Who knows? You can combo that up with, with a sniper team. Sniper fires into them, causes a pin. Now you hit it with the artillery, take two guys out, cause more pins. Okay. Now you, you know, maybe you have three pins on them. Now they got to roll to see if they route, you know, I've, I've lost a lot of uh, artillery pieces like that. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's that. On here's, the other, here's a quote. Oh, yep. sorry. Go ahead. Go nope. ahead. I was going to say on the other side, that artillery piece, especially howitzer, right? Um, it can do the same job as a mortar, just with a bigger impact, right? You would just have yeah. to, you have to watch out with your ranges. Now, the thing That's about... That's the, the pickle. Yes. If you can direct shot, cool. By all means, you know what? You're either going to be like one better or it's going to be, you need a six anyways, depending on cover, stuff like that. So if you need a six anyways, always remember... Go for the indirect if you're able to, because you're just going to get, it's going to get better and better. Right. Um, and I've, I've done that a lot of times where it's like, oh man, I should have just indirected because next turn it's going to be better for me. And that unit's not going to move. Right. Yeah. The other thing with howitzers, uh, is w what I was getting to. They're great for taking on veteran units or. Oh Yeah units that have um, hunkered themselves inside buildings. Oh, it just makes right. you avoid the buildings altogether. Like it, it's a huge it's, deterrent. I see you it, with the, with the howitzer on the table or, or a tank with a, a really heavy gun like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just not going to go in buildings. You've just made me not even you try. Yeah. So, you know, so now you're, so, now you're skirting around. And, you know, the chance that I catch you out in the open, well, you, hopefully you still have your order dice to use to go down because if not, you're going to get hit, right? It's, it's going to hurt. Well, yeah. And don't even forget the uh, combo effect because I'm not going into the buildings in the first place, remember? So, uh, even if your artillery doesn't necessarily catch me, mm -hmm. other units might. Your infantry squad runs up on me, but because I'm not in the building, if he gets the right angle on me, he's got me in the open too. Yeah. You know what true. I mean? So that's just denied. That's just, you know, leveled the playing field or, or has put it in, you know, uh, significantly in your advantage. If I don't also have some deterrent for you going into buildings. True. Cause if you can hunker into buildings and I don't feel safe enough to do that, then you have the cover and I, I don't see so you do, you've denied it to me yeah. and because yeah, those things hit. I mean, you just, especially those heavy howards, you're just blowing up that building. It's, it's, I was just going to say, yeah, it's quite probable more than likely you're blowing that building up. So it's not worth the risk. Yeah. You're, you're, you're better off letting the opponent destroy the building with you, with you not in it <laughs> to create, um, rubble ruin dense ruin now yeah. it's now it's safer for you to go in you know what i mean yeah um, totally but again like counter to artillery like we talked before is is pretty much either other artillery or you know mortars stuff like that right um tank he shells do the same thing um so there's that fast moving uh sorry i should mention too fast moving recce machine gunny type uh, tat a tat tats up close and personal in your artillery's face. Yes, can be a pretty big deterrent. <laughs> oh, hundred percent, hundred percent, and yeah. that's uh that's a unit I think that maybe I'm sure a lot of people utilize it. I haven't really seen too many recce vehicles as of late. Um, I know yourself. You you have used them a fair bit. Um, Dusty has used them a fair bit. Well, they are the greatest, like, really. single thing in this game. Really, I mean, here's the thing with them. So, if you don't target them, they're a threat. If you do target them, they're pretty much wasting your shot. Yeah, as long it's as it's a they, win, right? It's a win-win. 
So you have to really think about it, you know, how am I going to make him use his recce? You know, him or her uses recce. Um, so it, it's kind of like if you have multiple units or weapons that could, you know, okay, I'm going to sacrifice using this for it to recce. And then now that it recce, well, if I still have a shot, now he can't react kind of thing. Let's try to do it. Or you just sacrifice something to, to, to make them use their reaction up and it's out of the way. And then you just continue on fighting whatever else you're going to fight. Right. I mean, the ideal situation is you have two threats mm -hmm. and one is on ambush and True. you fire with the other one, forcing it to, 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 to decide to either take the hit or shot or recce. And as soon as it moves, you trigger your ambush. Yep. Yeah, that would work too. Uh, yeah, because he can't wreck you away from that second, from that ambush shot. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. But, I mean, that's also pretty tough to pull off. <laughs> yeah, there's a few things like that, that, you know. But that's the up. thing about wrecky vehicles that makes them so beautiful, is that they are, unless you really... You know, and it happens. Sometimes you just bonehead it. You're like, oh, gosh, I I got too aggressive with them. You know, you move them too early because mm -hmm. you're excited about taking that shot. Or you just take a risk. you just like, I know I'm going to get shot at, but I have to take that guy out. I have to move up and shoot that artillery in the face, even though I know if this doesn't go well, there's a blah, blah, blah that's going to destroy me. You know, sometimes you have to do that, but I mean, generally, as long as you're just fair, average, you know, careful, uh, it's tricky to catch them, catch them out. They're quite often the game survivors, even in a bloodbath. Oh, for sure. You know, for sure. Uh, and the great thing, the ones I normally like with my airborne. It's a friggin' Jeep. It's cheap. So even if you do take it out, it's not... I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna shed very many tears over that Jeep getting blown up. You but know, yeah, so... If, it, if it's doing its job, then, you know, it's worth whatever yeah. little points you've caught, paid for it, right? And that that's the other thing with soft skin recce vehicles. If, you know, they do react, well, if you have infantry or MMG team or something like that, Start throwing pins, blow, blow them up, or start throwing pins on them. Then eventually, well, you want to react? You, know, you got to make that order test, bud. You know. Yeah. And, even uh, uh, even this even the seven armor seven anything open top. Yep. And a lot of the recce vehicles are. Yeah. Throw pins on them, like you're not going to blow it up. But I don't. I can't tell you how many times I passed a leadership check where I have five pins. And failed a leadership check when I've had one pin. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? I, I know one exactly pin is the devil. It it is the worst amount to have. <laughs> no, it's true. It's very true. I know I've I've done the same thing. Um, yeah. So, and there, and you know what? There's a lot of things. There's other things too that you can actually do. Um, even with your officer. So you know if if you have your officer positioned right in between a, a certain few units that you like to kind of combo up, you could always snap to action, right? Yeah. And okay, snap to action, let's say these two units, three units, whatever, right? And that's including the, the officer. And you take one of those units to trigger that recce and maybe the other unit has the, the ability to take it out or to even put pins on it or, or something, right? Yeah, you, yeah, you absolutely. Just, have that flow of, of getting that, um, you know, getting that done, you know, on the other hand, like using the, you men snap, you know, snap to action kind of ability of the officer. I've seen a lot of guys use it quite well, you know, just to put a lot of pressure on units or, you know, multiple pins on units or just damage in general. Um, 
you know, especially against uh, infantry units that have been kind of singled out, right? So allows yeah. you. It's it's a definitely a pressure uh, tactic where it's okay. Bam! I hit them. What's your reaction? Uh, if you're super close with each other, more than likely the guy's going to go down to to make it worse for you to hit. Well, if that's the case, then your other unit is free to move around and get or into a better assault. position. Or exactly right now that he's down, he can't react. That kind of thing. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of little tactics like that that you can do, especially with the officer. And then, of course, if you have a higher ranking officer, they have a bigger reach and and whatnot. And you know, more uh, a more balanced force gives your officer, you know, more capabilities when doing those kind of things. More, you know, yeah, doing the snap to action. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's another thing too is is the caliber of officer. You know, um, I haven't played too many games where I've taken anything higher than a, you know, junior lieutenant or whatever, and only getting the plus one bonus. But lately I've been seeing people taking uh, higher officers for the better bonus, and it's like, it's actually helping. Like, yes, it costs more, but it's like saving these guys' a skin or it's just a better bonus overall, and, and you know, it really made the difference so yeah something i'd have to check that out yeah i'm not sure if i buy it's worth the points because they are beefy cost wise Mm -hmm. but certainly something that's something to think about i I haven't seen it too often like you said but Yeah. yeah yeah anyway but there's a lot of things like that there's uh you know transports you gotta think about that you know, what can you put in your transports? Um, we've probably mentioned it in earlier episodes, but I mean, there are some missions where you need to get off the board, right? Yeah. Um, there's also, you know, with transports carrying, like, unlike other games, the really cool thing with bolt action is these transports can actually carry multiple units based off of model count. Yeah. So, hey... I can carry three, three units in this thing, a squad of infantry, maybe an officer, maybe a flamethrower and deploy when you need them, deploy in critical moments, you know, maybe that flamethrower has a juicy target or like that mission, we got to get off the board. You score two points per unit that gets off the board. Well, if that transport with all three of the unit plus the transport get off the board, that's four times. That's the game. (laughs) That's... Right, tough to overcome. Oh, there's a road. Let's take that road. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Right, I've seen it so often. Um, So, having some kind of mobility is good, even if it is just one transport. Right, and the thing with transports is you got to play them smart. Like you, you don't get risky with them because you know you're thinking, ah, it's a seven plus armor. I should be okay. You know something out there is going to wreck your day. Like, I think any time yeah. I've taken my French truck, um, every time it gets destroyed. Every single they, time. They laugh at at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, every time. Like, it's either they get hit by, uh, you know, prep bombardment. Boom, gone. They get yeah. hit, They get hit by... A tank that takes it out just because, you know what, I positioned it wrong and he can see it because he can see it on the corner, blah, blah, blah. boom, gone. Now I take it down, double damage with my infantry, right? Stuff like that. So something to think about. I mean, there are some transports that have multiple machine guns on them. Yeah. Yeah. They could be a machine gun platform, you know, anti-infantry, right? When you're talking Mm -hmm. balance, really you're talking about your ability to deal with in my mind it's more about your ability to deal with the different threats more so than what than your particular comp uh composition yeah you know what i mean it's not about well i have three infantry units and three vehicles so i'm balanced it's about your threats and how you can deal with them and i think something to deal with tanks or armor 
something to deal with infantry, which is the easiest thing because this is mostly an infantry game. Correct. Infantry can also deal with infantry. You know, machine guns can deal with infantry. Mortars can deal with yeah. infantry. Artillery can deal with infantry. Snipers can deal with infantry. I mean, it, tanks can deal with infantry. Every, I mean, uh, something to deal with teams. Uh, something to deal with. Uh, uh, you know, longer range or indirect. Oh yeah. Uh, type weapons, artillery you know. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah counter battery fire or fast moving troops in a transport that can hop around and flamethrower or uh recce vehicles yep. are great for that um or using the mission you know and uh you know maybe there's a mission where you're allowed to do the outflank yes or or things like that or it's one of those missions where you come in on different board edges randomly yep. uh yep. you know so thinking about those things, and uh, I think, yeah, I think the the takeaway should be balancing based on threats. Do you have something to deal with anything that you can conceivably face? Yeah. Yeah, there's that. And, um, you know, there's there's a couple other units that we didn't actually touch on. Um, and you just mentioned uh, MMG team, and they're great for cutting off, uh, you know, uh, paths, you know, lines of fire, having that yeah, kill, really, having the kill zone, right? Yeah, they're they're area denial. Yeah, that's what they are. I don't know that they're worth their points. Different debate. Yes. Yeah, we've talked uh, about that before. Where it's. And it, kind of wish they had something else for them going. But. I I I think you know if ever we see bolt action third edition, a D multiplier of pins, D two pins on a machine gun will make a static machine gun worth fifty points, or just lower the points. Yeah, make a true. machine gun team less points. They're not they're not worth fifty points. But anyway. Rando <laughs> rant aside. But, uh, like, you know, going on as well, like, you have anti-tank rifles, which is a, a good against light vehicles, transports, right? That's another option for recce vehicles. You know, yeah. some some armies, like the Soviet Union Army, can take, take a multiple. buttload of them. So if you're using them as a team like a, a an organized group of units they can easily take on recce vehicles easy right yeah. you just put, you got to position them differently but um you know there's that and they can potentially pin heavier vehicles too yep so i mean even if you're not going to kill the thing like i said, throwing pins on on vehicles and I like I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a guy <laughs> with or me being that guy one pin and just oh well my tank is now doing nothing it's just backing up a little bit yeah there, there's that and then there's also the fact that because it has the damage um, bonus to it even firing at an artillery piece with it yeah exceptional damage right. can take out the piece take out you the can... actual piece yeah exactly yeah, you damage the hardware. So there's that option too. And then there's also um, multiple launchers. Oh, yes. Now, not every army has them, obviously, um, but the, the armies that do have them, if they take advantage of them and they actually work, uh, they can definitely do some heavy damage against massed armies. Oh yeah, right. they can be devastating, just stupid good. Yeah, so uh, you know that's again, it's another artillery piece that just do, does some mass damage across the board kind of thing, and you know it, it does its work right. If it goes off, it goes off. Um, but how many times is is it going to do it? Just like a mortar, just like a howitzer. The, it's the dice, right? So, um, but if you have an option to use it you know, something to think about something. It's, it's a big threat. 
Um, nobody wants to get hit by it, of course. Um, there's that. Um, and again, goes back to artillery pieces, same kind of idea and same kind of idea of taking them out. Um, you also have the options of, um, you know, your forward observers. They can be oh, threats, I, right? I love those things. You know, I, I almost never see them. I think I, in our gaming group, am the only one that takes them regularly. I have start just in the campaign, um, I had actually started to take the artillery observer for the yeah. Soviets because you get that reroll or whatever, or the extra D6 or whatever it is. I can't remember exactly the rule, but um, yeah, it's kind of like the first time I've really started taking them and have they been devastating? Yes. Um, have they been devastating to both sides? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> um, but I have had them where they've hit the enemy harder than they've hit me. Like maybe I sacked one of my units because, you know, it was um, just in the vicinity because I was getting really super close kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Compa you know, I, I like the artillery. Um, observer more than I do the air observer. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. If you want to do mass pins, air observer for sure. Um, the, some armies like the States, they, I believe get multiple. Yeah. With the States, you can do two. Yeah. You can call in two airstrikes, which in that case, I would take the air observer over the artillery observer. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. but yeah, for a hundred points, which is, which is steep, especially in a smaller game. Like, I mean, I'm not taking it in a 500 point game, but in a no. thousand point game, yeah, it's 10%, but I've seen it. I've had it at least one out of every four games. I've had it kill something. Right. And beyond the killing something like killing a vehicle or just decimating a squad uh, but beyond that, just taking a a swath and throwing pins on it, so basically all they can really do is uh, rally the next round. Yeah, I mean that can be a real thorn in a guy's side, and I've had it be effective enough that it's I'm happy paying that hundred points. I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel like it's a waste. What am I going to, like, I could take an extra squad, maybe, or like an inexperienced squad. I could take uh, upgrades, pretty much. Order, right? I can upgrade. Medic. But I think just the ability and, hell, just the ability to throw it in an area where they have their artillery situated. So now they're, like, risking it, or they're moving their artillery and not shooting at me. Boom, that's that's good. Uh, or near an objective and clearing out an area for, or making them move, just making them think. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, or even if they know I have it at the beginning of the game and they don't concentrate their forces, so they spread out because they don't want to get hit by that. I mean, that's also an opportunity. So even when it doesn't do well, it can do well. You, you know, <laughs> it doesn't have to hit to win. Yeah. Yeah, not for sure. Yeah, there's, uh, again, um, you know, doing, going with a balanced list, balanced army, be it a, a tournament or event or just a random game, you know, um, those are kind of things to think about, right? Uh, units that you want to put in your army, you want to try out, maybe you like this better than that. Um, will you have all the tools? Maybe not. Maybe you do. Maybe you've designed your army well enough that, this is how you like to run this. This is what you want to do. Um, but even, even in like theme lists, you know, um, you can still have majority of the tools to work with. Sometimes you won't have them all. Um, but this is kind of the, the idea of, of the episode worth what we're talking about, right? Just to give people, you know, the idea of, of balanced armies, uh, what they, can do the, you know, um, counters unit by unit kind of thing. Um, and I'm sure we, there might be some units that maybe we missed, but, uh, 
and then some some units like the medic um to me is kind of a waste of points right but if it works it works if it doesn't well it doesn't and then the other thing you got to think about too with with armies is the specific units uh in combination with the nation rules and stuff for those armies for those nations right you know um germans obviously mass machine guns take advantage of that right uh you get that bonus kind of thing mm-hmm. you know, soviets you get commissars um you get bonuses for art- artillery um observers stuff like that and then uh, the simple fact too that you know you get to re-roll pretty much if units of yours are being destroyed due to you know morale and stuff like that um take advantage of, of the units that you have you know protect the commissar kind of thing you know don't have them out in the open but work with that in your balance list as well right if you want to do a horde army you can do a horde army but you can still have those tools in your army to deal with that stuff you yeah know? and that's that's the thing too is that even in a themed list mm-hmm. uh generally you can balance it using something you might not be able to take a tank for instance right like my airborne i i you do have the tetriarch but i i play i mean realistically i'm not going to have that yeah in most theaters yeah so i uh uh you know maybe you don't have a tank but you have piots and anti-tank grenades you know there's the, there's ways to make even themed list balance i mean maybe the theme though is that it's unbalanced that's fine but generally you can find you can find a way yeah for sure yeah. and and there's one thing too to to uh, remember um as we're you know we were talking about this is your balance lists um per the era of the war you know early mid late is definitely going to change right obviously early war you know, the tanks themselves are not that great right they're lower numbers for for the armor so maybe they're not so much a threat anymore right they got machine guns mainly, maybe some auto cannons, maybe some light anti-tank guns. Um, so, you know, up to you if, if you really think that you'd really need to put an anti-tank gun in your army or have a tank to counter it. Or maybe all you need is just anti-tank rifles. Yeah. Save the points. Grab the rifles. They can do the job, right? Stuff like that. Now, again, you go to late war you're going to probably start fighting against some more elite armies, bigger tanks. Now you have to consider that, right? But again, uh, across all eras, regardless of what it is, you same kind of idea. Just look at what you need, look at what you have and, uh, you know, what you want to use to, to do what you, uh, plan on doing for the mission. Right. And that's, and that's the other thing is keep the mission. Like don't get, uh, don't get tunnel vision just on that tank that you're trying to take out. Right. It's check out the mission, remember the mission and, and you try to do your best to complete it. So that's, that's how you'll kind of like win games. And especially like myself, I've, I've been, I've gone to quite a few tournaments and, um, and not just for like bolt action, but just other games in general and but it's the same kind of thing keep your you know keep your eye on the prize for the keep, mission right keep that in mind too the keep the uh the mission uh if you're pre-planning for a specific you know game with your buddy or whatever mm-hmm. you know uh, keep the mission in mind when you're balancing your list like uh most or or if you're just doing a a pickup game most of the missions objectives cannot be claimed by vehicles yes so make sure you have some freaking infantry dude <laughs> you know maybe your two basic squads that you're required no, by by the rules to take aren't enough you know so 
uh, maybe beef them up or, or you know, uh, yep. think about the mission too. I did, we didn't really mention that earlier when we were talking about the balance, and I, I just wanted to hit on that as you were uh, doing just now. That Oh, 100%. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing I've learned in the past, um, you know, no matter – no matter how well you think you built your army and stuff like that, you know, um, if you lose track of that, there's probably a good chance you're going to lose the battle, right? And um, a lot of times if you do kind of keep that in mind and watch your threats and, and your units and what you need to do or what you want to do or have that idea, um, you know, there's a good chance you're probably going to do pretty good. It's going to be a good battle, and that's what everybody wants is having a good battle with your buddy or a good battle with a guy at the store or a yeah. turn up tournament or whatever, right? Oh, remember, no plan survives contact with the tabletop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, some good advice there, good, uh, you know, good chat about uh, the balanced armies and stuff like that. And it also, it also works for... Um, the thematic list also works for, uh, some of the theater selectors. I know like myself and Jason, when we, um, uh, played some of our Stalingrad scenarios, um, you know, after the first two missions playing as Germans myself, I kind of started to look more at, okay, this is the mission. Um, these are the units I have that I, I can use, you know, um, how am I going to make this work for me? Do I have too little? Do I have too much? What's going to make it better? What's the army better for this mission? Okay, well, I need to get across the bridge. I need to get onto Jason's side of the, the board. Well, I need to be mobile. Like, yeah, the theme of the army was to be mobile. You know, um, I need transports. I need infantry that are going to survive and get across the board and a thing, thing like that. Right. And it worked. So there's options like that, always stuff like that to consider as well. Um, especially with like themed scenarios and the, the, the theater selectors that they request you use for those theme scenarios. Um, it also applies, you know, I'm trying to make a, a, a bit of a balanced army for what you want there too. But at the same time, don't be afraid to just try anything out. Like, you know, just have fun. So, um, but yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good for this episode. Um, only other thing is a couple of just, uh, pre-orders for Warlord games. Just to touch base on that before we end here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of victory at sea stuff that came out. Um, so we got, we got to get, we got to do a couple games of that again, man. Yeah. That's, I believe, I had it in my head uh, after the campaign, kind of uh, leave the gaming floor open, don't actually do any events kind of thing at the moment, and just uh, have some random pickup games and, and do some yeah. Blood Red Skies, some Victory at Seas. I know there's a, another gentleman who uh, uh, was looking at getting some Victory at Sea games in, and plus I, ha I have the, a new gentleman there who's interested in bolt action, so we'll be doing a lot of that stuff. Um, but yeah... Some new releases, pre-orders, uh, looks like some more British, um, yeah. ships and destroyers, stuff. Destroyers, J-Class yeah. destroyers. J-Class destroyers, some Benson-class destroyers, Douglas Devastator flights, Dauntless flight, Douglas Dauntless flights, and the HMS Rawalapindi. Looks like it's a transport of some sort or something. Um, so that's coming out, uh, then for bolt action, new starter um, set, new starter set. Yep. The gentleman's war starter set, which was interesting. That was kind of, uh, not a shocker for me, but it was interesting that they did that. Um, so it looks like it is the British eighth army and the Africa corps. Plastic Humber. Yes. And plastic SDSK two two two. Exactly. So that's gonna that actually looks like a really good set. Just for those two things. Yeah. Looks like a really good set. Uh looks like a actually a, a balanced 
army to face off against each other. It's like they have the same amount of units and same kind of types of units. So it's a really good set. Um, that would be the one to paint up to, to have for demos for sure. <laughs> nice. So there's that. Uh, there's a Fiat 626 medium truck that they're coming out with. A Breda 61 prime mover transport and the Semovente L40 47-32 SPG as well. So uh, I'm not sure if that one's plastic or not, but um, but yeah, that's kind of what they're coming out for Bolt Action Victory at Sea. Of course, they have a whole bunch of other releases uh, for their other systems as well. Um, but uh, yeah, mainly Bolt Action for us here at the moment. So. That's kind of uh, what's on the pre-orders. So other than that, um, yeah, good episode. Thanks for being on there, Jason. No worries. I hope people appreciate the mediocre advice from a mediocre <laughs> player such as myself. <laughs> no, it's, that's good. That's good. It's always good to have the, the episodes like this and chat it up. And, and uh, on top of that, you know, if maybe you guys have different ideas or uh, maybe we missed something or, um, you know, uh, just other units stand out for you or other tactics, please, you know, in the comments, uh, please let us know, you know, hit us up, message us. Um, you know, we're on Facebook. We uh, have it on YouTube as well. Um, and then whatever other uh, podcasts, streaming, you know, uh, programs devices that you're on platforms um so yeah and if you like it um just let us know as well we'll probably be doing a lot more episodes like this uh and, and also uh try to do maybe some other systems like blood red sky and victory at seas as well spruce it up a little bit and um yeah always check out our instagram as uh, we're always posting weekly and uh definitely have miniatures done up and whatnot and please, you know, share your stuff with us too. We, I love seeing that stuff. I love seeing your guys' work, what you're working on, all that jazz. So, um, but yeah. So I guess uh, from here at Trent Wargaming, we'll be signing off and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Trident Wargaming. Build it, paint it, play it.